Hey, this is Brandon with Flycraft, and today I am gonna tell you everything you need to know about our 14-foot three-man guide model. So, like I said, this boat is 14 feet long, 56 inches wide, and a self-bailer. It's the biggest boat in our line of three different models. It comes standard with all three seats, a front and back lean bar, and an anchor system. And then we have all sorts of fun accessories that you can pair with it. So this boat really is um, very similar to our Stealth X boat, which we launched recently, but it is two feet longer. So although both boats can accommodate three people, this one has a higher weight capacity, a 1200 pound capacity. So what that means is if you have heavier passengers in the back of the boat, it will support the boat a little bit better that way. I mean, like I said, both boats are gonna accommodate three people, but this one will ride higher in the back for shallower draft, as well as just navigate a little easier with more weight in the back. The other thing, and one of the reasons this boat's really popular with guides or with people that fish a lot with three people is you have a little bit more storage space. Unlike the Stealth X where the third seat mounts to the gear rack, on this boat, the third seat mounts independent of the gear rack right in front of it. So a lot of people are confused and they think one boat have, might have more space than the other for the third angler. They're actually pretty much the same, but the difference is, is having the gear rack free if you choose to add that accessory to have coolers, gear bags, that type of thing. So like I said, this is our three person boat, the biggest boat in our line. That doesn't mean, you know, it's only great for three people. It's a perfect two person boat. It really works great as a solo fishing boat as well. Going back to the lean bars or leg locks, if you will, um, the boat does come with front and back lean bars. They are removable if you wanted to. I rarely take the front one off, maybe for transportation or storage, but it's easy to do if you want. Um, the back one, sometimes I will, if there's only two people in the boat and, you know, I'm doing a multi-day trip, which this boat, you know, has the capacity and storage space for, whether there's two people or three people. But if there's only two people in the boat and I'm floating for, you know, an overnight or longer, I can just pop that third seat off and the lean bar and load up the back of the boat with gear. So with this model being the largest boat in our line, 14 feet long, 56 inches wide, it is also the most stable boat. Now, I would say all three of our boat models are very stable for what they're meant to do, but because this boat's a little bigger and has a higher weight capacity, we do rate it for class three rapids versus class two. And even in rivers without rapids, just really swift water conditions such as South Fork of the Snake, something like that. It is gonna be more stable with three people in it. So you'll notice that here in Utah and surrounding states, we spend most of our time fishing, you know, small streams and big rivers. And I would say this boat is basically as capable as running, you know, skinny water, shallow rivers as our other two smaller boats. Um, but it's also great, you know, on bigger rivers, the Green, the Snake, the Madison and plenty, plenty more. Although most of the stuff, the videos you're gonna see from us are gonna be rivers and streams. It's also a great stillwater boat, whether it's that Texas bass pond, a big lake, or even the ocean. Uh, a lot of people along the Texas coast, Florida, Georgia, California, on and on, are using this boat for chasing redfish, stripers up north, even crab pots and bays, that type of thing. So the boat's great for you know, bigger bodies of open water on, you know, obviously calm days, as well as, like I said, streams, ponds, big rivers. The way we construct this boat, it's definitely meant to hold up in the salt water. Like anything else in the salt, you want to just hose it off after use, but the PVC what is what the inflatable boat's made out of, is fine in the salt, and then our frame is aluminum, and then we powder coat that for extra durability and corrosion resistance, and use stainless steel hardware. Now, speaking of durability, I'm gonna run you through some of the specs on the construction of the boat. So the boat is five separate air chambers. So in the rare occurrence of a puncture, which is probably not gonna be from a rock or a stick, when someone does puncture the boat, it tends to be from sharp metal, usually not even on the river. If that ever happens, and like I said, it's not likely, don't panic, we give you a repair kit. You're not gonna ruin your boat. Um, usually you can just call me, I'll coach you through an easy repair. 
If it's something beyond that that you wanted us to fix for you, we certainly could. And you also have a three year warranty on manufacturer's defects. But getting back to if a puncture does happen, five separate air chambers means the boat is not gonna sink. So it's a very safe design, so you don't really need to worry about that. Now it's 1100 denier PVC, which is a really high thread count, durable PVC. It's, it's about a millimeter thick. What we do to make the boat lightweight is, you know, the top of the boat is that one layer of um, PVC. We do have reinforcement under the frame where the frame can rub on it. But then the bottom of the boat is really beefed up. Uh, you're seeing us throwing this boat off bridges, dragging it down the bank. That's what it's meant to do. To accommodate that, the whole bottom of the boat is two layers thick. And then we really find the brunt of the abuse is on the corners of the boat, under on the bottom corners. So we had two more ply of PVC there, which are virtually like skid plates. And you'll see like those are meant to get wear. If we were looking at some of our personal boats right here, you know, well-used boats should have wear on those skid plates. Our frame is inch and a quarter aluminum tubing that we manufacture here in Salt Lake City. And it's a modular frame, which is the most common thing you're gonna find on rafts, whether it's fishing rafts or, you know, whitewater rafts, that type of thing. What I love about that is you can break it down for storage. I personally don't do that a lot, but some people have RVs that they're trying to transport the boat with, um, or, you know, off season, they wanna put it on a shelf in the garage, that type of thing. So it allows you to do that. On the inside of our frame, we, on the right side, we run our two to one mechanical advantage anchor system. Now we run this through the inside of the frame so that it is a very catch-free design. It's just like a drift boat anchor system, but instead of a foot pedal system, the anchor rope comes out right, in, right to the right of the rower, and there's a cam cleat so you can raise and lower the anchor. We run it through the inside of the frame, which gives us, one, a very safe design because you don't have as much exposed rope and pulleys that you or your dog could get tangled in, but it also helps with fishability so that you have less to tangle your fly line on. That rope continues from right in front of the rower seat through the inside of the frame out the back. That's where the anchor hangs off the back of the boat. Now, it's a two to one mechanical advantage, which means a dual rope comes out, which is definitely what we recommend for when you're on rivers, because one, it gives you a centered anchor point, and two, it makes the anchor weight half of what it really is. So if you're using a 25 pound anchor, it you have the stopping power of a 25 pound anchor, but when you're lifting it, it feels like half that weight. If you want to, for still water situations, you can undo that system. You just untie a knot, it takes a few seconds, and then you can just have a single strand of rope come out. That's gonna give you twice as much anchor rope. You have about 20 feet of anchor rope with a two to one system, but you can double that if you're on a lake and you want a deeper depth. Back to the frame on our leg locks, um, we really designed those to be modeled after drift boats. A lot of rafts we've been in simply just had a bar and although it helped with stability when we were leaning forwards, that's not what we're doing all the time. Lots of times we're fishing off the side of the boat, even chucking casts behind us to, you know, hit that target, that rising fish that we're trying to get to. So by, by having actual leg locks like most drift boats have, we can stand forward, but we can also be sideways and just have one leg locked in. You'll notice our oar arms on the side of the boat. Um, we have raised and extended off the side to accommodate both anywhere from an eight and a half to a nine foot oar. I typically use the Cataract Streamlight oar we sell, which is an eight foot nine inch oar. There's a lot of great oars out there. You can always give me a call or shoot me an email if you have questions on oars. What we find is since our oar arms can be mounted in various positions with the holes in the frame, and then the seats are also on rails that can, your seat can be moved forward or back, we can accommodate someone of any height. If you're 5'2", this boat's gonna row fine for you depending on how you set that up, or if you're 6'8", it's not gonna be a problem. Another thing that was really important to us with the design of this boat model as well as all of our others is a really clean design and maximizing storage in a relatively small boat. We talked about the gear rack, that's great for storage. And that's where I put a lot of my non-essentials. I might have a grill back there. I might have my lunch coolers back there, first aid kits, rain gear, dry bags, all that type of thing, or you know, overnight camping gear. But inside the boat, um, there's plenty of storage space under the seats. So that's where I'm gonna keep maybe my cooler of beverages and snacks, my fishing bag or box, things that you're accessing more throughout the day. So 
I think you're gonna find, I mean, I probably bring a lot more gear than the average person. My friends love making fun of me for that, but if you're that guy like I am, or more minimalistic, you're gonna have ample room, so don't be fooled by, you know, it being a smaller boat. We've really maximized the amount of space. And you'll notice that the front seat of our boat is elevated, which allows a lot of small coolers and bags that won't fit under the front seat of other frames to fit under our boat. It also gives you a better vantage point for fishing. You know, it's kind of the classic drift boat design once again. You're sitting up higher, you can see fish better. When also when you're making casts, it gives you a little bit more space flinging those hooks above the rower's head. And really all three seats have ample space for fishing. It's gonna be pretty similar to a drift boat, honestly. And that means, you know, front and back anglers can both be standing and casting at the same time. Yes, the boat's 56 inches wide. Don't be fooled by, the, you know, the narrowness. It is stable and swift currents for two people to be able to stand and cast at the same time. Even if one person, I mean, this is a very common occurrence. One person's hooked up to a fish, fighting it over the left side of the boat. You drop anchor or you're just free floating. The dog's standing on that side tube, watching it. The, the rower is leaning over the same side to net the fish and the person in the back may be leaning over to take a picture, right? Um, the boat's stable, it's meant for that. Don't be fooled by it being a narrow design. I think you'll find once you are in our boat, you may think most other boats are too wide. Speaking of stability, um, another huge thing that helps our boat be as stable as it is, both for your stand-up stability as well as, you know, the boat just being stable on the water is our rigid drop stitch floor. If you don't know what that is, the way we construct our floor is different than most rafts. Drop stitching basically is thousands of stitching fibers that connect the top of the floor to the bottom. Although our floor is an inflatable floor, it's six inches thick, when you put the appropriate amount of air pressure in it, it really should feel like a board under your feet. A lot of people have fished in rafts and they don't like the feeling of that squishy floor. You know, it's fatiguing on you. It also means that boat doesn't row the same as a drift boat. Our boat's gonna give you the advantages of a raft, you know, bouncing it off rocks, dragging it down the bank, that type of thing. But it's gonna row and handle like a flat bottom boat. So if you're crab rowing, that type of thing. And a lot of people are surprised, you know, not many of you guys get the chance to see me at a trade show or come by our, our showroom here in Salt Lake. If you're ever in Salt Lake, feel free. But if you get in a boat, you're gonna be, one of our boats, you're gonna be really surprised that it, you know, it really feels rigid. That six inch floor that we use also is crucial for adding that buoyancy for our shallow draft. You know, with two people in this boat, you're gonna see about a three to four inch draft. With three people in the boat, it's gonna be maybe four to five, um, depending on the weight of the people, the amount of gear you have. Having the, that six inch floor and then the 16 inch tubes that we use give us that extra buoyancy. It also allows it to be a self bailer. I know in the past before we launched our self bailing boats, I mean, years ago, there's interviews with me where I might not have had the best opinion about self bailing. And some of you may have rode some rafts that you're like, you know, this is convenient that it's self bailing, but it does not handle well because of that. And that's why we didn't adopt any self bailing technology that already existed. Through years of R&D, trial and error, we developed our own system, which I'm happy to say, honestly, I do not notice a difference rowing this boat. When we first were testing it, we were testing it both a sealed floor and a self baler. We really didn't notice a difference the way it rode. So the advantage of being self baling is it allows you to run rapids. More importantly is we're getting out and we're wade fishing sometimes, right? And you're sloshing water and water always finds its way in the boat, whether it's a wet dog, a rainstorm. I mean, there's nothing worse than driving to go on a fishing trip. You drive through a rainstorm and you get to the water and and before you can even unload your boat, you have to like pump out all this water, flip it over, that type of thing. In our smaller stealth, that's less of an issue because it's already such a smaller boat. Or at the end of the day, you're done floating and your dog's been swimming, you've been stepping in and out. You don't need to take the time to drain this boat before you pull it up and throw it on your vehicle uh, because the water is already gone. Now, if you want more information on self bailing, uh, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. We'll probably do some more follow-up videos explaining the self bailing technology a little bit more. So yeah, feel free to reach out. So like I mentioned in the beginning, the, the guide base package comes with all three seats, the oar lock arms, the oar locks, both lean bars, the, and the anchor system. Really at this point, all you need to add 
um, our auras, which you could pick up in one of our other packages, or some people already have their own auras. You'll probably also want an anchor weight. So we sell those accessories. Um, we normally have a couple different aura options in stock. Um, like I said, anywhere from an eight to a nine or an eight foot nine ore is perfect. We prefer shoulder cut shallow water blades and like full size ore shaft diameter, not those skinny little kick boat ores for a boat of this size. A 25 pound anchor is in my opinion, perfect, especially if it's a pyramid shape. I think whether I'm in a small stream, a lake, or even a really pushy fast water river, it holds this boat. And a lot of people are surprised that a 25 pound anchor is gonna hold the boat. A lot of that has to do with the rocker, which is that lift that's in the bow and stern of the boat. Now our boat has a lot more rocker than a lot of fishing rafts. It's kind of modeled after what you'll see in a lot of whitewater rafts. That rocker gives you a bunch of advantages. One, although we're a 14 foot boat, we don't have 14 feet of boat in the water. So you have that usable space in the boat. And if you needed to, if the boat was leaning one way or the other, you'd have that extra stability. Those extra few feet of boat front and back are riding out of the water. So that really gives this boat a lot of maneuverability. If you're maneuvering through boulder gardens, running rapids, that type of thing. If you've ever been in a boat that's a lot flatter, even like a 12 foot or 13 foot boat that's not as long as ours that is flatter is gonna feel like a much longer boat than ours. Another thing people don't realize is that that really translates to anchorability or rowing back upstream. So because that boat is kicked up in the front and back, when you drop anchor, the water's gonna rush under the back of the boat. If we were a flatter design, a 25 pound anchor would not hold us. But another thing to think about is when we're rowing for fishing, we tend to row a lot more than the average person. We row even more than like whitewater guides because we're constantly back rowing to control our speed, that fisherman wants to be here, there, slower, faster, that type of thing. So that rocker allows us to back row upstream and current. Um, your buddy hooks his fly on a log and you're trying to hold position while he's trying to roll cast it off. I'm sure that's never happened to you. Um, that's gonna help a lot. So one of the biggest advantages of our boat and you know, it's why we created our first model, the two-man stealth, was to solve transportation issues. A lot of people might not have a truck. What's nice about all three of our boat models is Yes, you can trailer it, but you don't need to. This boat, a lot of people do put on a trailer, um, but it will fit in the bed of a pickup truck. So this boat's only 145 pounds at the base weight. So, you know, the boat and the frame, um, you might get another five, 10 pounds if you're adding certain accessories, which we can talk about later. It's still ultimately gonna be lighter than any other three person boat out there, which means if you wanna go fishing alone and getting it in and out of the back of your truck, or on and off a trailer you can, or two people, three people, no big deal. Access places that don't have boat ramps, carry it through a field, drag it down a bank, that type of thing. So I mentioned back of truck and trailers. If you are going back a truck, if you have like a long bed truck, you won't need any sort of accessory with your tailgate down. You'll still support more than half the boat and you just flag the back. If you have like a standard bed or a short bed, not a big deal. You just get one of those hitch mount tailgate extenders. They're not super expensive. They range from about 90 to $300, depending which model you get. And you can always contact me for recommendations on that. So if you, if you install one of those, it's gonna support the boat beyond the halfway point and you can transport it in the back of a truck. There's a lot of different trailer options out there. Flatbeds are great, converted jet ski trailers, drift boat, jet boat, on and on. If you are getting a trailer, my recommendation is get something you can use for other purposes. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. But a lot of people put these boats on the roof of vehicles. I mean, if you have an SUV or a truck with crossbars or even, you know, things like Subarus, you can put it up on the roof. This boat being a little bit longer tends to pair better. You know, it's not like my two-man boat where people are putting it on the roof of Corollas, but uh, vehicles that have a little bit longer of um, a roof and crossbar span, it's great for that. So if you have it up on the roof of a vehicle, bed of a truck, a trailer, you can certainly go highway speeds. The boat is rigid and meant to do that. So, you know, with the way the raft is constructed with the frame strapped on there, I mean, going 80 miles an hour through, you know, through Montana, whatever, is not a problem. Um, another nice little hack is if you wanna save weight or gas mileage, you can always unstrap the frame from the raft. It only takes a few seconds to undo those cam straps. Now you can easily lift that frame up. You know, it's probably 65, 70 pounds, something like that. And you can lift that up and put it on the roof of the vehicle yourself. Um, 
without really any trouble. And now you don't have any, not much wind resistance. So you're not seeing that gas mileage affected for longer drives. And then I just deflate and roll the boat and put it in the back. Now that's a nice hack for people that have SUVs, Subarus, or maybe uh, campers. You always can break the frame down too, like I mentioned when we were talking about storage. So you can break it down um, and we'll show you in a second here what it looks like when it's fully broken down. You can also just split it in half and thirds, whatever works for you. Um, remove lean bars, use the quick releases for seats, and that allows you to throw it in the trunk of a, you know, a forerunner or a RV compartment or a shelf in the garage, apartment closet, that type of thing. So in addition to this boat model, feel free to browse our website or contact me with accessory questions. I'd say the two most popular accessories for this boat, other than like oars and an anchor, would be the gear rack and the rod holder. Like I said, I think one huge advantage of this boat is being able to have that gear rack back there for extra storage, especially when there's three people in the boat. The gear rack also pairs really nicely with our rod holder. You don't necessarily need the gear rack to have the rod holder, but I do think that they work best together just because there's that bracket under the gear rack that holds the tubes. If you don't have that, you can strap the ends of the rod holder tubes to the side of the frame. Long story short, they work great together. Now our rod holder holds three fly rods. Um, one of the big advantages, one of the many advantages of fishing out of a boat is having multiple different rod setups. Now, if you imagine, if you have three people in the boat, you have three rods stored in the rod holder, and then each angler has a rod in their hands. That allows you to have five different pre-rigged rods. Now, if you're floating a river, the Delaware or the Madison, you might throughout the day be encountering rising fish, streamers, or you know, you get to that hole that you just can't pass up and you, you want to nymph it. It's not uncommon to use you know, a nymph rod, a streamer rod, maybe streamer rods of different sink rates, or you know, big dry fly foam rods for hoppers or smaller dry fly rods for mayflies, that type of thing. Now, instead of tying a bunch of knots, and changing up your rigs, you can just grab um, a different rod out of the rod holder. The guides love it for when a client may break off a rig or tangle a rig. Um, when that happens, you can just stash that, wait till the next spot that you're gonna have a snack or something like that and just hand them a different rod. So it really gives you the ability to ultimately catch more fish. In addition to the rod holder, we have things like cup holders, electric pumps, you can check out all that. Um, another really popular one though is that motor mount accessory. A lot of people wonder about motoring in this boat. We rate this boat up to a 3.5 horse. That is gonna push you around six miles an hour, give or take a mile per hour, depending on variables such as water conditions, weight in the boat, elevation, those all can affect it. Um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, can I put a bigger motor on? I wouldn't go beyond a 3.5 horse that's gonna be around a 40 pound motor. I really still prefer the Honda 2.3 horsepower just cause it's 30 pounds. The thing is, is more horsepower, since it's not a planing hull boat, isn't gonna push you any faster. So I would just say, find a brand motor that you like and get a nice lightweight one. Um, electric motors are great too, you know, anywhere from a 55 to 70 pound thrust or Torquedo and E-Propulsion make really nice 3.5 electric motors. There's a lot of great options out there. Um, our motor mount is gonna be universal for any transom mount motor, whether it's a small gas or electric trolling motor. And once again, if you have more questions on that, give me a ring or shoot me an email. So if you are motoring on rivers, lakes, the ocean, um, this is a great boat for you. And now you don't need a separate lake specific boat and a separate river drift boat or raft. Um, lastly, I'd like to mention, you know, we quite often get asked about having dogs in the boat. Bring your dogs along. This boat is durable to withstand your dog. You're gonna see in addition to us reinforcing the bottom of the boat heavily, we also have reinforcement on the top of the floor of this boat. Um, I've never heard of a dog's uh, nails damaging the boat and the boat is plenty stable to have three people in the boat and even a dog or two and plenty of room for them as well. So thanks a lot for tuning in on the information on the Flycraft three-man guide boat. And as always, if you ever have any more questions, give me a call at the number below or shoot me an email. Look forward to chatting with you soon.